Today we're just going to go ahead and see how can we actually pass through a USB to our Kali virtual machine. Why do we need to do that? The primary purpose of this would be to be able to pass a USB wireless adapter because as I said before, your virtual machine does not have access to your integrated network wireless card. So if I type in uh, the password here and if I go ahead and zoom, yes, please, thank you. So type in ifconfig and you can see that I have two interfaces listed here. So the uh, this interface, this is not a wireless interface, and even though I am uh, connected to the network via wireless, I am not connected to the network uh, with a cable. I'm obviously using the wireless network, as you can see in the upper upper right corner. But that is a you see that is a problem because you won't be able to go through the wireless part of the course. I mean, you'll be able to see it and all that. But if you don't have access to the wireless card, that can be problematic. Now, I've stated before that there are two ways of going about this. One of the ways is checking for the compatibility of your wireless card with not only Kali Linux, but Aircrack, and see if it's compatible on Aircrack-ng website. However, that procedure has been uh, somewhat frowned upon. As you, as you can't actually just use the model of your card, you actually need to go on the net and look for the chipset which is used by your card, which is used by your card, and then you use that chipset to go onto the aircrack site and look for that chipset number, at, uh, well let's call it a number, but marcation, whatever you wish to call it, look for it and see if it's compatible. So if you want to go through the process, I mean by all means, feel free to do so. Uh, I will even help you out if you like, but I have opted for a different solution. I have opted to actually get a USB wireless adapter, pass it to a virtual machine and get an extra interface here for wireless. So the very first thing that we're going to need to do is power off our machines. So just type in power off. Let's shut it down. The second thing that we're going to need that we will need to do is see if we are actually capable of passing through a USB. If not, we will need to install additional software. And I will show you which one which USB do I have, which USB wireless adapter do I have. So if we go over to ports and if we go over to USB, I have USB 1.1, USB 0.2. So let's let me just plug my device in and let's see if it actually works out. And this thing only has two USB ports which is amazing. If I say USB 2.0, invalid setting detected, huh, why? USB page. USB 2.0.3.0 is currently enabled for this virtual machine. However, this requires extension pack. Okay, so we need an extension pack in order to be able to do this. I'm just going to unplug my device. I will show you later on which device am I using as a USB adapter. But we're just going to go ahead and say OK here. And now we will open up our browser. I'm using the default one Safari, even though I generally use Firefox, but I'm guessing that, uh, but I'm assuming that this is stock, so we're just gonna use whatever we can uh, from the system itself. Uh, let's go ahead and search for Oracle Virtual Box. And here we go, Oracle VM Virtual Box. Let's go ahead and click on it. Uh, sure, we can get it from here, but I was hoping to go straight to Oracle. Actually, wait, let's just see if we can get it from here so I don't have to bother on their site. Uh, t -t 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 wait, downloads. Extension pack, there we go. So I do have it here. I actually didn't notice it here. I, usually I just wanted to go over to the Oracle site and then navigated my way through there to find the page that was dedicated for VirtualBox. But okay, no big deal. Uh, if you're using 430, please download the extension pack here. But we're using 504. Oh, by the way, before we actually download them, you can check the version of your VirtualBox in the help menu. Uh, so just type 
press on contacts should be there uh, no uh, it is actually it is so it's version 504 there you go it's there are some slight interface variations between VirtualBox for Windows Mac and Linux but nothing too drastic really so no worries okay so let's go back to Safari and it says VirtualBox 504 Oracle VM VirtualBox extension pack all supported platforms so I'll just go ahead and click on this link the download is in progress this should take a lot less time as these things are not very big it's just 16 megabytes let's open it up uh, you're gonna run please yes no maybe no okay so downloads uh, where are they extension pack here we go You're about to install VirtualBox extension pack. Extension packs complement the functionality of VirtualBox. I'm just reading this because it's probably too tiny for you to see. Maybe it's not. I can see it quite clearly from some distance away. The functionality of VirtualBox and can contain system level software that could be potentially harmful to your system. Please review the description below and only proceed if you have obtained extension pack from a trusted source. Okay, so uh, I sincerely hope that we have obtained it from a trusted source source. This is signed. Safari is using an encrypted connection and encryption with digital certificate. Uh, show me the certificate. Very signed. Class 3. Okay, so this should be fine as far as I can see. Uh, the HTTPS seems to check out as far as I can see anyway, but there are never any 100% guarantees. There's always that 0.0.0.0000 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. something chance that something will go wrong. So uh, one more thing. If you are running anything else, any other programs that are like VirtualBox, so if you have VM, VM, uh, VMware or if you have Parallels or something like that, you might not want to install VirtualBox alongside with them because it's generally not a good idea to run two, uh, two instances of these virtualization softwares of these uh, it's not it's just not a good idea not only on Mac but on any other system on Linux on Windows as well so if you have one either remove it or use it do not install another one next to it I mean you can and you have a chance that everything will work out but you know just to keep it on the safe side anyway I'm gonna go ahead and click on install there is a license agreement here to accept from Oracle agree now it's gonna prompt us for a password so let's just type that in and now it is installing extension pack and there we go it has successfully managed to install it without any difficulties now what we need to do is simply go ahead and enter settings go into ports these are serial ports never mind that you go into the USB and now you now you see you can select uh, 203011 whatever you wish uh, we're gonna go ahead and select 20 and let's just see if this works okay I can indeed see some of the things here uh, definitely Logitech USB headset the one that I'm using to record this so I can I can I have access to that I'm gonna go ahead and say okay for now and not add anything I'm just gonna go over to the net to show you a picture and a model number of the wireless network adapter that I have next to me now it is not mandatory that you get this particular adapter you can get any other that is compatible uh, or that is accessible to you but make sure that it is compatible with Kali Linux that it is compatible with aircrack-ng so I'm gonna go ahead and see the model number it's a bit of a lengthy one so it's AW uh, US 0 US 0 and it's 36 NHR 3 
six n h r v dot two. Okay, it's opening it up. I need image. So I'm I'm sincerely hoping that you can all see the model number here. It's a w u s zero three six n h r version two. Uh, no, I didn't want that site at all. I need images. So there you go. This is how it actually looks like. This is what I'm holding in my hand now. Uh, really, any of these pictures will do. They're all showing, I suppose, the same adapter. And this is the one that I am using. So if you want to use anything, this is the one that I have tested out. If you want to use anything else, by all means, you are free to do so. Uh, this particular adapter is not a must-have. You can obviously take another one that you have checked for compatibility. Check for compatibility on this site, aircrack-ng. And let's go ahead, select compatibility. And there you go, you have the available chipsets and you have, it says, supported by Airdump for Linux, supported by AirPlay, uh, supported by Airdump for Windows, we don't really care about that now, but both this needs to be included, supported by Airdump for Linux and supported by AirPlay for Linux. And you need to figure out what is the chipset of your card. How do you figure out the chipset of your card? Uh, write the write the model number and then just write the question in your favorite search engine and say what is the chipset of the model number press enter and you'll be able to figure it out not a hard thing to do at all and then take the model number then take the chipset number and go here uh, sorry not the chipset number the chipset designation and then come here and try to figure out try to find it even if it's not listed here it has a chance of working out but you know it can be a little bit dodgy you know some features might work some others might not or it might not work at all then again you can just go onto the net and look for the compatible adapters if you know if you can't get this one this one is like i think i got this one for 20 bucks or something like that it's a fairly good one uh from ebay but you know if you can find something cheaper that works uh, feel free but I have not tested anything else out. So I've just tested out this adapter. And I've also tested out the wireless card in my primary machine and some other things as well in terms of wireless. But as far as the wireless USB adapters are concerned, this is the one that I have tested out. Anything else, I can't make vouchers that it will work, but I mean, just make the checks for yourself and see if both, if, this part says yes and if this colon as well says yes then it should work no big deal so just go go with whatever option you feel the most comfortable with and uh, keep in mind the cost so try to be cost effective as well anyway let's go ahead and plug it in so just take the USB cable all that I'm doing is taking a USB cable I'm plugging it into the adapter that I got with the adapter and then I'm going to spin it around and then I'm going to plug the USB adapter into the machine. This is the well the second time in five minutes that I'm plugging it in but I didn't really do anything I just tried plugging it in. So I'm just going to plug it in to the machine and I hope that it's not dead. That would be very nice if it's alive at least because I don't see a blue flashing light at all. So let's try, I'm just going to go ahead and try plugging it into my laptop to see if it's actually alive. Because I haven't used it for a while. Okay, so it is functional, definitely I see a blue lamp. That part is obvious anyway. Uh, let's go ahead and plug it in and see what happens. Nothing, but oh well. Let's see if we can manage to pass it through anyway. So I have the device plugged in. All that I did now is plug the device in. I did not install any drivers prior to this. I did not do anything other than just plug the device into the, into my Mac. That is all, via the USB port with a cable that came with the device. That is all, nothing else. And this is the first time that I'm pretty much doing this. So uh, 
let's go ahead and right click here, settings, go into ports, USB, it's 2.0 EHCI controller, click on the plus sign, and 11N USB. So let's select that and click on OK. Now let's power the Kali machine up and see what happens. Okay, excellent. So my USB is now blue. The, la the blue lamp is on. Notice that I did not install anything on Mac. I did not install any drivers. The Mac did not recognize this device. The Mac doesn't have a clue what this device is. It's just passing it through. It just knows that it's a USB and it's passing it through a virtual box to this virtual machine. That is all. I actually couldn't use this device on a Mac until I installed the drivers for it, but I'm not going to do that because I'm never going to use it on a Mac. What would I use it on a Mac for? Anyway, so control shift plus 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 to magnify, and if I type in IF config, press enter, voila, you have VLAN, WLAN 0. I am not connected to any networks, but I mean, it's right there. I can use it, obviously. If I press this in, if I press this, uh, not connected, well, okay, obviously. Select the network, do I seriously, okay, there we go. So I have a ton load of networks around me that I can use to connect. And let me just go ahead and cancel this. Uh, go into network, I'm gonna go into network settings. I'm gonna go into network and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna say it's, you see where it says bridge adapter? I'm gonna say not attached. So it's not attached to any of the integrated adapters in the machine. Doesn't care, doesn't matter. This is gonna bring the internet connection down completely in terms of wired connection. I'm doing this so we can rely, so that I can demonstrate that this wireless adapter actually works. And I'm gonna try to ping google.com now. This is not gonna work out as you might imagine. And I'm just gonna control C to quit. Now, what I shall do is just go into the network manager here, go into Wi-Fi, select a network, select this network, click on connect, type in the password, let it connect, and I'm gonna leave it to attempt a ping to see when it actually connects. Are you serious? Did I, do I have I forgotten the password? Uh, you know, when you don't use your own wireless for a very long time, you tend to forget a password, which is, <laughs> it can be very frustrating, to say the least. Okay, okay, okay. Ah, is it this one? Please tell me that it's this one. Uh, there we go. So, pinggoogle.com has managed to pass through successfully. Uh, still having some difficulties. It could be the range on this thing because I'm sitting quite some distance away. And this is a virtual machine, so keep that in mind. And the ISP router is utter junk, I can tell you that. But okay, the ping passed at least once, so you know you at least have connect. Actually, didn't pass. I did resolve the IP address, so that's something, right? Nope, doesn't want to. Okay, no big deal. We'll fix it. So it is pinging Google, but it's uh, hilariously slow. Let's attempt to open up a browser and let's go to Udemy. Is it gonna open the site? No, it will not open the site. Okay, so this is good that I have encountered a problem. This is bad because I will need to make another tutorial on how to solve this.